is my year of supernatural overflow. All right, let's celebrate Jesus, the owner and builder of our church. And in the same way, we want to appreciate our mother and our father in the house. Amen. All right, we will be taking our prayer for souls and outreaches. The book of Acts, number 13, verse 48, it says, And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the Lord, glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Amen. Now I want to be praying. And when we stand, we shall be praying and we will say, Father, in the name of Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb, we destroy all satanic strongholds against the salvation of all that are ordained unto eternal life across our harvest field. Throughout this prophetic season, let's stand to our feet and declare these words with power and authority father in the name of jesus and by the blood of the lamb we destroy all satanic strongholds against the salvation of all that are ordained to be saved all that are ordained unto eternal life across our harvest field Lift your voice in prayer. Father, we destroy all satanic strongholds against the salvation of all that are ordained unto eternal life across our harvest field in this prophetic season. We crush, we destroy all satanic strongholds against the salvation of any soul that is ordained to be saved in this prophetic season. It is not the will of God that any soul perish. Lift your voice in prayer. And as we pray, we destroy all satanic strongholds against the salvation of all that are ordained to be saved. Father, in the name of Jesus, and by the blood of the Lamb, we secure the salvation of all that are ordained to be saved. We destroy all satanic strongholds against the salvation of every soul ordained to be saved in this season. Lift your voice in prayer. Let's open our mouths, begin to thank Him. Wave your hands to the Lord. Thank Him for the salvation of every soul that is ordained to be saved. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. My year of supernatural overflow. We thank God for the life of our father and our mother. Hallelujah. Surely we shall be rising. And when we do, we'll be praying for Ukraine. We're reading the book of Isaiah 32, verse 18. It said, And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. And Ecclesiastes 9, 18. So wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyed much good. And what we are seeing in Ukraine, wisdom is not in display. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the peace of Ukraine. Let the killing stop. Let the destruction stop. We rebuke the demon of war and confusion. Deliver everyone in distress and cause the weapons of war to be silent. Open your mouth, be on your feet, and begin to pray these prayers in the name of Jesus. Decree that the war should stop 
in the name of Jesus. The killing should stop in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the peace of Ukraine. Let the killing stop. Let the distraction stop. We rebuke the demon of war and confusion. We deliver everyone in distress and cause the weapons of war to be silent in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the peace of Ukraine. Let the killing stop. Let the distraction stop. We rebuke the demon of war and confusion. Deliver everyone in distress and cause the weapons of war to be silent. Re Barozeke, Re Badose Bragada, Le Grosegende. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the peace of Ukraine. Let the killing stop. Let the destruction stop. We rebuke the demon of war and confusion. Deliver everyone in distress and cause the weapons of war to be silent. Re Barose. Bagadia, Zeze, Le Panoro, Zenta Laba, Zeka Baria, Le Paroge. We rebuke the demon of war and confusion. Deliver everyone in distress and cause the weapons of war to be silent in the name of Jesus. Le Paroribia, Zetelebosa. Open your mouth and begin to appreciate Jesus for an answered prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Can you take your seat? Supernatural overflow. I live in prosperity. We are three days into Vision Conference 2022. Somebody give Jesus a mighty clap offering. You also want to help me honor God's chosen vessel, our Father. Thank you, Daddy and Mommy, for this opportunity. In a short while, we shall be praying for life transforming word. Taking a scripture from Isaiah 8, 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Luke 5, 17. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of the town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. When we rise on our feet, we shall be lifting our voices saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, send your life transforming word in all our services, resulting in holiness, miracles, signs, and wonders to meet the needs of your people. You want to rise on your feet and violently declare, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, send your life transforming word in all our services, resulting in holiness, Miracles, signs, and wonders to meet the needs of your people. Somebody lift your voice. Father, in this vision conference, send your life transforming word. Let it result in miracles, signs, and wonders to meet the needs of your people. Send your life transforming word in all our services resulting in holiness, miracles, signs and wonders to meet the needs of your people. Father, in the name of Jesus, send your life transforming word in all our services. Hey, go Maya Satya da 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 da. Hey, go para da da Satya da da. Hey, go Maya Satya da. Let the word result in holiness, miracles, signs and wonders to meet the needs of your people. Ha, kaya da da Satya pa ya da. Le ya no no so Satya pa ya da da. Ha, kaya Satya da 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 da. Hey, go Maya Satya da da. Ha, kaya so pa Maya da 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 da. Ha, ya Satya da da da. Your life transforming word. Ha, kaya Satya da da. In all services, Karamonaya Satayana resulting in holiness, miracles, signs, and wonders to meet the needs of your people. Haya Kara Satata, Lea Masata Pamaya Kayada, Le No Sata Kaya Payada, Lea Satopa Maya Kaya, 
Le Sata Kaya Parada Satayada, his para Sato Kayada. Somebody begin to wave and thank the Lord. Even for answer prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Please resume your seat. Supernatural overflow. Supernatural overflow. You know the man, no. You know the man, no. You are the God who opens. No man can shut. You know the man, no. You know the man, I know. You are the God of every day. No one like you. You know the man, no. You know the man, no. You are the God who opens it. No man can shut. You know the man, no. You know the man, no. You are the God of everything. No one like you. No one like you. Yes, yes. No one like you. Zekosa. No one like you. Atifarati. No one like you. Ekuku fala katoko. No one like you. Eletu mare. No one like you. Master. You are the God of everything. No one like you. Lord, I thank you for your touch and your warm embrace. Is somebody in the house? The joy that fills my heart, Lord. Lord, I'm so grateful. Lord, I thank you for your touch. Hey. Hey. And your warm embrace. Oh, that joy that fills my heart. Lord, Lord I'm so thankful. Lift your hands, everybody, and sing with me. You are the bam of Gilea. You are the rose of Sharon. Yeah. You are my peace in the midst of the storms. The storms. You are the air I bring Oh no You are, you are, you are You are the air I bring Can I sing this song? It is raining All around us Echo Fakapai I can feel it it's a lot of rain Right on Jesus Jesus Please send us more rain Until we are wet Until we are soaked In the lot of rain Supernatural overflow, people of God. Please help me give glory and thanks to Jesus, the owner and the builder of this church. And help me honor our father as well and our mother. Daddy, thank you for this opportunity. We'll be praying for church growth, taking our scripture from Revelations 22 and 2. 
in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations we will say father in the name of Jesus give every believer in this church a minimum of 12 standing souls one soul per month give every soul winner an undying passion for souls to achieve their targets rise upon your feet and pray this prayer with strength and power father in the name of Jesus give every believer in this church a minimum of one soul per month a minimum of 12 souls per year father God give every believer a dying undying passion for souls let the passion for souls be undying unwavering let the seal for souls be undying Lord God every day and kingdom advancement as we are going out on the field of souls every day Lord God let it be our goal and our target to speak to somebody about Jesus and drag them and draw them into church father in the name of Jesus we are praying for our soul this month whoever the soul may be whoever the souls may be this month Lord God that will add unto this church father doubling and tripling our number if every believer would adhere to your word this year Lord Father, in the name of Jesus, give every believer in this church a minimum of one soul per month, Father. Let every cell grow, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, let us be fruitful this year. Let us be obedient this year, Lord. Lord God, let us have a passion and a boldness to speak to new people, Lord. To speak to people and let them come and follow us to church. Let there be souls every single week. Let everyone in this church have a minimum of one soul per month. Father God, remove any spirit that will be un they'll be wavering and keeping us from fulfilling our assignment in the name of Jesus. Father God, Lord God, go before us and let the souls be prepared. Double our number and we will not be few, Lord God. Multiply us on every side. Father God, you are the God of multiplication. Lord, let every believer, even the children in this church, bring a new soul every single month in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. We bless your holy name for you are the Lord of the harvest in the mighty name of Jesus we've prayed kindly have your seats we were reminding you that we are live on Fox TV SBN TV AG TV Facebook YouTube and Podbeam in Jesus name supernatural overflow we want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ the owner and the builder of this church and as we are still in the mood of prayer, we'll be rising up shortly with our prayer expectation cards and we'll be lifting our prayers before the Lord. We'll take a scripture from 1 Timothy 1.18. It says, this church I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies that went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. By this scripture, let's kindly rise up on our feet holding in our hands our prayer expectation cards and presenting every desire upon our hearts before the almighty God. As you are praying, know that the Lord God, whom you are praying to, He is. He is the rewarder of everyone who will diligently seek Him. Seek Him diligently in every request that you have.
the faithful God we are praying to. He is answering us. Let your faith go up, even as you are presenting your request before him, knowing that he is answering all our prayers. In the precious name of Jesus have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. This is our year of supernatural overflow. Once again, let's celebrate the Lord Jesus, the owner and the builder of our church, and help me honor God's servant, our Father. In a short while, we want to consider a scripture in Revelation 22, reading from verse 1 to 2. He said, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, verse 2, and in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits. Amen. So since the beginning of this conference, our Father has been leading us to discover ways by which we can fulfill God's plan and purpose for our lives. And one of the things that he has taught us is that for our vision to be fulfilled, we must pursue God and not our vision. We must pursue God, not our vision. And when we pursue God and his will, his interest, his business, God will lead us to fulfill our vision. So the question then is, what does it mean to pursue God? Simply, to pursue God means to pursue his interests, to seek his will and his kingdom. And how do we know the will of God? According to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, the Bible says that it is the desire of God that all people will be saved. God wants you and your household he wants you and your friends, those living in your neighborhood, to be saved. And so this year, he spoke to his servant and told us that among the many things that we are going to be doing to see to the fulfillment of our vision, each of us must bring into the house 12 standing souls. Give Jesus a big hand for this vision. So this is God's dream God's vision, and we are being called upon to buy into it. So as we saw in the scripture, Revelation 22, 2, the tree bear 12 manner of fruits, and we are also required to bear 12 fruits this year. So what must we do? One, we must pray. Pray that God will lead us to the souls who are ready to be saved. We are told in Acts 8, 29, that the Spirit led Philip to the Ethiopian eunuch. So as we pray... God will lead us to the souls that need to be saved. We pray that their hearts will be open to receive the gospel. And praying alone is not enough. We must reach out to them. Look around you, your immediate and distant family, your friends, your office colleagues, your neighbors, people around you. Reach out. And on your own, it might be difficult for you to go out. So every Saturday as a church, we meet here. We go out. Join somebody. Daddy will give you a partner. You go out and speak to people about the love of Christ. Now, when you do that, you make sure you get their contact so that you can follow up. Call them, get to know their house if possible, and bring them to church, which means that maybe for the first week or one month, you have to spend some money, pay somebody's lorry fare, bring them to church, hire Uber for them, four or five of them, bring them to church, and when they come... You also make sure that they attend foundation school and they are in a home cell. Now, when you maintain your focus on this heavenly vision, God will also make sure that your vision is fulfilled. Give Jesus a big hand for this great opportunity. Supernatural overflow. Supernatural overflow. 
please help me let's celebrate Jesus, the owner and the builder of the church. Thank you, Daddy, for the opportunity. We salute our first lady. I have the opportunity to review our book for the month, Holy Spirit, my partner for all round success. And I'm looking at chapter one, where Daddy talks about the successful church. He says that understand that for any believer to be successful, of which we are all hoping and believing God to be successful. And so Daddy says that if you want to be successful and to be influential, it takes the Holy Spirit. It takes who? The Holy Spirit. So Daddy also says that, why? Because we live in a world ruled by spirit. Whether you agree or you don't agree, this is the truth. And this is what the worldly people, they know it so much that every single thing, they will consult something. I hope you know it. And so Daddy says, don't be deceived by the suits people wear and talk big, big English. There is something under the suits. So everybody is running for something because the world is ruled by spirit. And Daddy says, most are evil spirits tormenting and destroying destinies. So he also says that the ordinary person will find it difficult to succeed without the backing of a greater spiritual power. So, won't me for any kind and I'm okay. Yeah, they are, but no, it's not possible. We need something. And for us, we need the Holy Spirit. Now, that is says, so when a believer is filled with the Spirit and consistently walks in the Spirit, his success will be felt by both people and the environment around him. May your success be felt in Jesus' name. So, that is says that how then does the Holy Spirit make us successful? The Holy Spirit makes us successful by making us influential. So what is influence? It is simply the power to affect persons or events. So the power of the Holy Spirit gives you access by helping you to influence your generation. Now he makes a very nice statement here. He says that the Holy Spirit is the engine behind greater achievement. So if you want to achieve something great in life, we need to look for the engine. And daddy has told us that the Holy Spirit is the engine. So when you see a car that is going at the top speed, they have certain levels of engine that we, your car may not have. Don't struggle. You need a certain level of engine. And it is the Holy Spirit who does that for us. So I don't know how many of us here ever pray to God and say, God, this is the height that I want. Do you have control over that? We don't have control over our height. It came naturally by virtue of our genes. The genes that we picked from our father and our mother, we had our natural height. You had the shape of your nose, the shape of our mouth. It was determined already. The same way when we partner with the Holy Spirit, certain things will come naturally. So we will succeed naturally, we'll be influential naturally. Please, I want you to get this book, such a powerful book, in this month of being led by the Spirit. And as we read it, whatever success you are looking for, you will receive it in Jesus' name. Please put your hands together for the Lord.
Supernatural overflow. Let's clap our hands better together for Jesus, the owner and the builder of this church. And let's also honor our father and our mother. Daddy, thank you for this opportunity. Praise the Lord. Let's please pay attention to the following faith cathedral announcements. Number one, next Sunday is the sixth of March and it's dubbed Covenant Day of Exemption and it's our anointing service for the month. Hallelujah. And so please come with your own bottle of anointing oil and expect to be blessed. Number two, Vision Conference will still continue tomorrow until Sunday the 6th of March. Let's all endeavor to invite our friends and our loved ones to participate in this life-changing encounter with God's servants. Number three, our 12-hour prayer marathon will continue. You can clap, clap again for Jesus, hallelujah. It's a time to, it's a time to engage divinity. It will come off on Monday, the 7th of March at 6 a.m. And it will run through till 6 p.m. Amen. Number four, there will be soul winning and tele-evangelism on Saturday at 9 a.m. Every member is encouraged to take part of this weekly raid to meet their soul, 12 soul targets for the year. And finally, all home sales will still meet on Saturday from 6 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. For directions to the nearest cell center in your area, please talk to any of the pastors or better still look on the board under the tent 
and find directions to your soul. God bless you and enjoy the service. Supernatural overflow. Shall we appreciate the servant of the Lord, our father and mother? It's time for testimonies. So, Brother Daniel testifies of tithing, yielding multiple harvest. He says, I came to church on Sunday, 27 February 2022, with my Thanksgiving offering. However, when it was time to sow the seed during the service, I surprisingly did not go forward with mine. While Daddy was ministering, he said that if we do not pay our tithes, all our other sacrifices and resources are not protected. They are cursed. This statement really shook me. So since I owe God tithe, I went to the altar after service to pay it and use the rest of the money I had as my thanksgiving seed, leaving me with nothing. Now, people of God, by the time I set off from the church premises, my brother sent me 30 Ghana cities. That's the first testimony, which I used as transportation. The following day, an uncle sent me 100 Ghana cities. That same morning, my aunt in the U.S. also sent me some money. Two days after, a cousin I met also blessed me with some money. After service that same evening, I again got a call that one of my cousins had been asking of me to bring me some food and supplies. I thank God so much for his faithfulness and for honoring his word. Can somebody appreciate God for this great intervention? And Sister Winnie testifies of supernatural intervention in her academics. She says, in 2021, we wrote our first year, first semester exams online. The duration for one of my papers was an hour. And during that period, there was consistent light out in my area. So on the day of the paper, my battery was at 5%. Meanwhile, the system was such that once the network failed, it was assumed you had finished, so the work will automatically be submitted. Unfortunately, after answering about 20 questions out of 60, my phone went off. I ended up having an E in that course. That same semester, I had a C in another course. But I knew strongly that what I wrote in the exam warranted a better grade. So I lodged a complaint, but all efforts were to no avail. Again, during that same period, the deadline for one of the papers was that day at 4 p.m. But many of my colleagues and I could not submit the work before that deadline. We informed the lecturer and she firmly said that she would not take our papers, so we will have to receipt those papers. Now, during the 30 days journey of faith and power in that year, I came to the premises early to sweep as a member of the sanctuary keepers department. And any time I swept, I asked God not to let my labor in his house be in vain. I asked him to look onto my service and intervene in my academics. Now, on 18th November 2021, people of God, the same lecturer who was bent on making us receive the papers, asked us to submit our papers for marking. Again, in January this year, 2022, when I checked my results, the E that I had supernaturally changed to an A. Do it better, somebody. And she says, the C also miraculously changed to a B. I thank God Almighty for his endless mercies 
Can somebody appreciate God for his faithfulness in these academics? Then Mrs. Freeman also testifies of miracle scholarship. She says, in October 2021, Reverend Dr. Bempa prophesied to my daughter that she will get a scholarship. To the glory of God, the prophecy indeed came true. Early this year, 2022, she received an email from Cornell University of Engineering that she had been given a full scholarship. Wow. She says, God willing, she will be living in August this year on full scholarship. God bless the man of God for availing himself, for God to use him and to be a blessing to us. Now, we are going to take our last testimony from Pastor David Bafo Ewa. With a hand clap, shall we invite the man of God as he testifies about divine direction and guidance into a new career path. Do it better once again for this powerful revelation. Supernatural overflow. I live in prosperity. We would like to thank Jesus, the owner and builder of our church. And daddy and mommy, I thank you for this opportunity to, to share my testimony on divine guidance and direction. It all started two and a half years ago when daddy declared our journey of faith and power in 2019. And right after the service, I went home, but daddy was always saying, when you go home, don't just sleep, but expect a vision. Expect that God will talk to you and put a pen and a paper by you whilst you sleep. So I went home, and then I was, you know, I just went to bed, and then I had a vision. And in the vision, I saw that I was standing under a tree, and there were like fruits just, you know, falling on my head and all that. And then I saw animals like cattle coming towards me with full speed. And there, there, there were a lot of them. So I woke up and then I was asking God that, God, what is this all about? And I heard a voice tell me that, you have to go into farming. But I was asking myself that I'm a, a finance professional. One of the subjects that I hated in school, or I didn't, I didn't take too much interest in, let me put it that way, was a Greek. So how can I become a farmer? But I told my wife about it, and she said, once you have heard from God, then we would have to obey what God says. So by the grace of God, we started the journey where I went around a bit. I met a few people, asked them about farming, and I was directed. And eventually, we went to see a woman who was once an award winner, um, national award winner. So I went there, and she was into Pigri, and she said, oh, it's very lucrative. So you can start Pigri. And we asked her, how are we going to do it? She said, oh, fortunately, there's this man who is very scarce. She's been looking for the man for about almost a year. And she hardly sees the man. But the man is actually on his way today to her place. So we were just talking and the man turned up. And the man said, look, I just like you guys. I would help you set up and everything. So we knew that we were in God's plan. Now we started looking for a land. We went all over the place looking for the land to, um, you know, go into farming, uh, to start the project. But it took a while. Everywhere we went to frustrations. You know how land issues are and all that. Then my wife said, okay, today you go to work. I'll stay at home the whole day. I'll pray and I'm sure something will come up. 
So I came back from work and then she told me that, you know what? Um, God spoke to me. I heard a voice and I take it as the voice of the spirit. So I said, I heard a voice and the voice said, go and talk to your grandmother. So go and see your grandmother. So I said, wow. Grandmother said, okay, no problem. So I went to my grandmother, had a word with her, and she said, oh, your uncle knows someone somewhere. So, you know, so just to fast forward everything, we ended up in um, Pomazi, that's Winneba area. And we got there, and we were going for two plots because we wanted to start with livestock, and then we see what we can do. Now we got there, and... The people, uh, my uncle knows the chief, so we went straight to the chief. And then the chief said, look, why are you guys coming for two plots? You don't look like somebody who needs just two plots. You need more than two plots. So we'll give you two, uh, more than two. And I said, oh, so how many plots? He said, oh, we have about 10 acres. So I was asking that 10 acres. said, yes, we'll give you 10 acres. I said, oh. But you know, I wouldn't pay everything immediately. He said, oh, you just go and then start it. And then, you know, we'll talk about the payment. So just let's put something together. And then we went there. They showed us the place. We started farming and, and, and all that. So whilst we were, um, whilst we sta- uh, were about to just um, start the whole thing, um, I remember my wife asked me a question that where is the funding going to come from because the projects that we are looking at is a big project and i remember telling her that if you observe the wind you would not sow once god has said it he will make that provision so it became my mantra so she sometimes calls me you observe if you observe the wind you will not sow so every time it was on my lips so we we started and by the grace of god we were able to build the, our piggy um, project. Like we started it off and all. Once we started, we realized that helpers were coming from all over. As soon as the project started, what, I, uh, what made me know that God was really in what we were doing and that we were working in God's plan is a few months later, the family came in and they told us that why uh, they don't know why they gave us 10 plots uh, 10 acres the same family they don't know why they gave because the maximum they give over there is 1 acre so they don't understand why they gave us 10 acres but they've already done it so they, they like you know they will just take it as it is we went through it and then a year later we won the by the grace of god we won the uh, Gumwa District, Livestock Farmers of the Year. So the whole district. And it all happened within a year. Now, the next thing that happened was, by God's grace, within a short time, we had an extra 20 acres. Then it got to 30. Then within a short time, another 15. So we had like 35. Then 12. So now, as I speak with you, we have 47 acres of land which we are farming. And one more thing, God knew that we were supposed to do more than just livestock. So he directed us into going into, um, he directed us into um, cash crops. So that is uh, pineapple and um, coconut. So as I speak with you now, on the land, we have pineapple and coconut. And apart from the livestock that we have. And on this land with the um, coconut, if I tell you that I have over 2,500 or maybe close to 3,000 coconut trees on my land, but I did not pay a dime for it.
God bless you, Pastor Davis, for that testimony. I want to encourage you tonight that God will also do it for you. He knows the times and seasons we are in. He knows what each one of us needs for a transformation. And tonight he is here to give us the words we need to lead us into our overflow. Somehow forgotten that you were faced with circumstances, but you cannot get through. Right now, it seems but there's no way out, and it all went under. God's proven time and time again, He will take care of you, and He will do it for you. He will do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you be. Hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but you do it again. Let's take it again. You may be down and feel like God. Has somehow forgotten that she will face with circumstances that you cannot get through. And right now, it seems that there's no way out, and it going under. God's proven time and time again, He will take care of you, and He will do it again, He will do it again, just take a look at where you are now, and where you be. And it always come through He will fix it for you Just before you imagine He will do it again You may not know how You may not know when But you do it again Oh, He's still God not fail. I know he took God and he never changes. I know he took God and was fighting for you. Just like a day
But he's gonna do it again Just like he did it He won't do it You may She don't have to know She don't have to know Just keep trusting Just to lie Lift your hands. I want you to write this prayer point down. I look at somebody who was, he was a finance person. And God tells him, go into farming. The reason why many of us are failing is because God hasn't told us anything. We are running with what we want. I want you to pray for the next three nights. Pray and say, Father, what do you want me to do next? Write that prayer point down. He said, oh, Father, give me shoe, give me shoe, give me shoe. It's a waste of time. Many don't know what God wants them to do. Many are doing what they feel like doing. What they have read from somewhere. 3,000 coconut trees. And the coconut tree, it bears forever. Except you cut it. So now, children's children are secure. That doesn't mean that tomorrow you to go and do coconut. It may fall and come and hit your head. This is what he told his servant because he paid attention. And look at what the wife did. He said, you go home. Go. I will stay here. Others are painting their face. They've been painting their face all life. Every day broke. Others are moving. Prophet, show me this. Man of God, show me this. Man of God, show me this. You see, you are not supposed to struggle the way you are struggling. But many are functioning outside God's vision. So write this prayer point. That whether you are a doctor or you are a soldier or you are whatever. Maybe for the, the last 30 years of your life, you are wrong. And you need humility to learn how to turn back. So from tonight, I'm giving you three nights of the same prayer. Don't pray any other prayer. Father, what do you want me to do next? After the bad years, we are forgiving you. But you can't keep on like this. There is always a way out. 3,000 seedlings. If you see anybody functioning prosperously in this kingdom, it's not school they attended though. They have found out what God's vision is for their life. Sit down and go and write something. Run. So if you are young, start now. There are people who don't have any certificate, but every day God is talking to them. Start this business. Start this business. You see them, you wonder. You don't know what they are doing. This is the secret. This is the secret. But if you call vision conference, every what is vision? Pray for us. Lay hands on us. But all the laying on of hands with all the supernatural energy, if you drive it in the wrong direction, some people to all that they know is that once I studied history, I must be a historian. It's very unfortunate. Because you see, in the church, we don't teach about visions, which is a major, major subject, too fundamental. Somebody will just wake up. I feel they say there is money here. He's driving there. God has a plan for your life. I hope you have written the prayer topic down. Pray one prayer. Don't change it. Look at how to one dream can turn a man into. One dream. 49, 47 or 9 acres of land. The people gave it whether they were thinking or they were not thinking. Because it is God. Many, many, many people have never. And that will never be your story that you would live a wasted life working outside. So this conference is too important for you. But you see, because of what we call the vogue, what is going on in town, 
What is going on in town? My mother-in-law must die. That's the theme of the conference. Okay, your mother-in-law died. Did, what did you get receive? <laughs> I go. Lift up your hand and say, Father, before this conference is over, I need a dream. I need a vision. Pray and enforce it. Enforce it. Before this conference is over, you must talk to me. You must show me what to do. I can't run my teacher's race. I can't run a race because of certificate. Show me. What a, what a testimony. What a testimony. The man has gone to UK, studied all the God say, hey, my son, this is where your breakthrough is. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Pray, Lord, what do I do next? Be humble. Pray it with all intensity. Many of us are looking for jobs when God has ordained us to create jobs, but we don't know because we will not ask. Thank you, Lord. So tonight, clap your hands for the Lord. How many of you are setting yourself to hear from God? We hear from God. The next thing to do. If you are running after the wrong thing, every prayer is futility. So tonight we are looking at how to pursue your vision. Now you know what to do. Some to up to today we don't know. How to pursue. How to bring the vision to pass. So you line yourself up and listen to all the four days. Because each one of them is answering specific question. Every child of God is redeemed for a glorious life. You have to know that. However, it is revelation that determines the quality and the level of glory you enjoy. Everybody's life is glorious, but glory is in levels and in shapes. It is revelation that determines the level of glory you will enjoy and the quality of glory you will enjoy. Even prosperity is in levels. A discovery of God's vision for each individual and the keys that leads to its fulfillment will determine the weight of glory anyone can enjoy. Glory is in levels. If you are able to discover the vision and find out the keys, like yesterday we spoke about, it will determine the weight. Glory is in weight. It means levels. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. They cast off restraint. They go haywire. They go anywhere, run anywhere, sweating for nothing. You have to understand these four things I'm about to say. Write them down. Number one, life without vision is a colossal failure. Life, living without knowing what specifically God wants you to know. Not what your mother told you or what your teacher told you. It's a colossal failure. Number two, life without a bearing is a burden. Bearing means to know where you are going. Life without a bearing is a burden. So you need to know your bearing. Number three, life without vision is not worth living. Life without vision is not worth living. So you must catch a vision before you start running. Number four, living without a vision is a waste of divine resources. 
living without a vision is a waste of divine resources. So, however, we have to understand that it is vision that makes life meaningful. Your life starts becoming meaningful when you discover God's vision for your life. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 and 3. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. So tonight when you are sleeping, let one of your eyes be open. And I will watch to see, watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. So set yourself this week to hear from God. Don't sleep anyhow. Lord, I am set to hear. Where you are is not your final bus stop. Where you are, the man behind the KFC conglomerate. The man behind the KFC business, if you've ever eaten Keteke chicken before, got that idea after retirement. He used to work in the army. When they retired him, that's when he became a millionaire. Not by the retirement money. He came back home and started cooking his mother's recipe, meaning that the way his mother used to fry chicken. So one day he got some friends who came to visit this man. Old man. After I think he was 60, 70 there. He has retired from the army. Then the friends ate the chicken. They said, my God, this thing is so nice. So they kept coming. And then one day, an idea occurred to him. Why don't I fry this chicken and put it in front of our area? He fried it, put it there. People came, they bought it all. That's how KFC story started. Today, it's a global conglomerate. The man died a billionaire. When did the million start? After retirement. Look at us. When we retire, we retire our legs, our brains, our eyes, everything retire. But in the name of Jesus, as you are hearing me, you are about to enter into the best season of your life in the name of Jesus. When I heard a man of God, Kenneth Copeland said, I don't retire, I refire. Lift your hand and say, I don't retire, I refire. So stop thinking about retirement. Your company can retire you, but don't retire yourself. A man became a billionaire after retirement. You are now sitting there waiting for Senate. Because nobody taught us. Moses was 120 years old. Still becoming very relevant. So everybody watching me with a retirement mentality. I declare it destroyed. You will be so relevant till the day you die. Somebody shout, Amen. Two factors that influence vision fulfillment. If there is any teaching that must be important to you, is what we are doing this week. Many are living their lives upside down. Some are suffering. They say, What is happening to me? You have not found your bearing in life. You've not found your burial. People even have money. They don't know what to do. They won't find out. Oh, my friend said if you sell a wig, it will be fine. My friend said if you sell The last wig that you brought, you are, you are wearing it yourself because your own nobody is buying. Your own is not in wig. Some are supposed to move into school establishment. Some are supposed to move into hospital, whatever. But you got to know and nobody can tell you Go to God. Even if you have to spend seven days, it's better to hear seven days and run down to waste 70 years of your life not knowing what God wants you to do. So, two factors that influence vision fulfillment. Number one, appointed place. Appointed place. Anytime God tells you something to do, you have to find out where. Where. There is no place like everywhere. 
There is no place like everywhere. You get to the station. Where are you going? Everywhere. No cow will pick you. Which means that those going everywhere never go somewhere. Those going everywhere never go. There is no car in the station that is going everywhere. So you end up not having a car. So life is stagnated when you decide to go everywhere. Every vision has a physical location. When the woman of God prayed, the Lord directed them. Winneba Road. There are many lands in Zugakope, but that was not the appointed place. Second Samuel 17. Pay attention and be serious. You see, many people don't know what is serious. Oh. Yes. Many people don't know. Second Samuel 17. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel. Underline that place. So there are appointed places where certain things must take place. There are appointed places. When this just started, we wanted to, somebody wanted us to throw us to Labadi. Give us a land. When you go, they are buried chicken. They are buried a the cow. They are buried this. Some people have taken portion of the land. I was going around police headquarters, moving. Some of the people, the police may even help me are dead. Fighting. There was one small place, be like a park. It was a no man's land. And then one day, by the grace of God, a man came and took over the fight. Whilst I was struggling to try to whatever, he came and he said that, oh, the land owners that sold the land to me, they bypassed me and they sold it to him. So he wanted to pay me my money. I said, God bless you. Bring the money now. <laughs> I collected all the money. And I said, go and continue the fight. That's almost 11 years ago. They've still not been able to put one block on that place. Clap your hands. God delivered me. <laughs> it is not every resistance that is evil. Sometimes the Holy Ghost say, my son, since when I talk to you, you can't hear. Let me raise somebody to come and stop you. That's why Psalm 34 verse 1 is important. I will bless the Lord at all times. There is a portion of the earth designed to accommodate every vision. So it can flourish. As apples do not grow everywhere, so vision do not get fulfilled everywhere. Every mission has a base. Every mission has a bed. There are people, they just, oh, I'm angry. I'm leaving the church. There's one church behind my house. We don't do that. Dangerous for you. Even church, you must be directed as to where you belong. Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh. Where his ministry was going to have global significance. He said, no, I'm going to Tarsus. He lost everything, including he almost lost his life. Jonah 1, 1 to 17. He lost the vision. He almost lost his life. But the grace of God, a fish swallowed him and swam him through to the right place. God helped Jonah. Today, there will not be anybody called Jonah in the Bible. <laughs> you see, you will not take time to, to hear the vision before you start running. So you are saying me to, to anything. I'm talking to Jonah. I'm not talking to you. It was a fish that misdirected Jonah to the right place. The fish could hear better than Jonah. But you know, after he decided to go where God wanted him to go, you heard the man say he hated that great science. That's him. There's nothing wrong for him saying that. There are things all of us don't like. I don't know what you hate now. Maybe. That's where your millions. That's where your satisfaction. That girl that you hate. 
may be a sweet wife to you. But she doesn't have the shape that you like. It doesn't have your balloon useless things you've written on paper. Five feet tall. You have even measured the size of the bonbons. People have all kinds of useless visions. I don't like an infant in me, in my spirit. I don't like airways. You see, all these kind of things eh, is the reason why God can't talk to her because it's pride that makes you, you, be, you, are, you have become so plastic. You don't move, you don't shake. God is saying that I have a lady coming from Sogakope. If you marry her, she will make you a Melania. He said, no, I want somebody from a commander. Since God doesn't force anybody, he said, oh, yeah, make you go now. And since you follow this accommodant lady, what we eat is a problem. Men are going where they want to go, like atom. Pam, 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 pam. And binding devil, the devil says, leave me alone. I've not, I've not come to worry you. You have missed direction. Thank God Jonah was able to know that the way the storms are coming he is the reason. But many will not know till they are buried. That will never be your story. Yeah. Lift your hand and say, Lord, give me the humility to make a U turn when I miss the road. Give me the humility to make the U turn when I miss the. Can you imagine people in wrong relations say, No, no, but everybody knows I have to go and marry because right now, if I say I'm going to turn, people will be asking questions. Eh? My mother knows, my father knows, my pastor knows. Brother, don't worry yourself about me. <laughs> me, I'm a free agent. If you come to say God is not leading, I say, Why, oh, yeah, may the Lord be with you. Nobody can force somebody on anybody. When Jonah hit the right vision, now listen, the greatest revival in Bible history was done by Jonah. The Bible said when he went to Nineveh and he preached, the whole city repented. Nothing has ever happened like that. Until even animals were fasting. The greatest revival in history happened to prophet Jonah. It has never repeated itself again. And what message did he preach? Only eight letter words. Yet in 40 days, God will destroy Nineveh. That's the message. Man of God, what are you saying? Yet in 40 days, God will destroy Nineveh. TV3 will come. Yet in 40 days, God will destroy Nineveh. No explanation. Eight words. Turn the whole city around. Not because Jonah was powerful, but because he was in the right place at the right time. Put your hands together for the Lord. Now listen, your success and protection is guaranteed all, only in the right place. No matter how powerful you are, you get to the right place, your defense system will be removed. There are angels waiting for you at the right place. Many have died when they were not supposed to die because they got outside. When you miss your appointed place, you miss your protection too. Rise up and go to Zarafat. I have appointed a widow woman to sustain you. The prophet said, me, I'm a prophet. I won't go. She will have died in the famine. Your sustenance is in the appointed place. So a pastor shouldn't just stand up and say, I'm going to easily go to build a church because I, that's where the melanins are. Appointed place. Are you in the right place? Are you in the right church? Are you staying in the right place? This place you want to travel to. Is it the place God wants you to go? The next important factor, appointed time. You have to check all these things. And of God, yesterday I saw myself holding the Bible. The next day, you know, you have started the crusade. <laughs> and of God, I saw myself holding one bottle in one hand and a very big Bible. Uh, Six kilo, kilograms of King James Bible in the other hands. Say, please, I'm no man usher in the church. I started my ministry. A 
Exodus 9 5. Exodus 9 5. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. Not two days later, tomorrow. A set time. All these are things we need to check in our lives. The Lord appointed us. You see, sometimes I ask, him, when are you going to marry? He say, my birthday, my birthday, my birthday. <laughs> Not the day that God, my birthday. <laughs> what is strange about your birthday? It's only the same day and night. <laughs> if you will check with your spirit, you will know that it will rain on that birthday. <laughs> Understanding God's schedule in vision fulfillment is very crucial. Habakkuk 2 3. The vision is for an appointed time. I bless God, they refused me American visa many times when I was wanted to go to America. This church will not be here. I will have eaten this church with McDonald's. Or probably you come and find me selling bread <laughs> and chips at KFC in New York. My God, lift your hand and shall deliver me, Lord, from blindness, from blindness, from blindness. I was so desperate to go to America. I and my friend called Frank. And one day the devil helped me. I had the vision. Frank was climbing the plane, I was climbing the plane. So the next day, the two of us met at the American Embassy. They gave him the visa, they refused me. I said, Lord, are you not the one that showed me the vision? Somebody shout, appointed time. My God. Frank went, he's still there. I've gone and come many times. I don't need to stay there. At the right time, I went. And they gave me visa even without interview. I, I collected the visa without joining the line. They just bypassed. Somebody, I, I've, not, I've never seen him before. Sir, 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 please don't join the line. 150 people, if you join the line. Pastor Ness was waiting for me outside. And he knew I would come out after five or six hours. Because when you go in the morning, you'll be there. One visa be the one to give us. You'll be there. So in few hours, I came looking for him. I called, he said, he, he was even still around the compound. It was a, just a short time. The man said, you are not supposed to join the last city. When it is time, I will call you. So the man just jumped me, jumped me, jumped me, jumped me. When I finished, when, I, when they called me, they said, ah, well, when you traveled last time to Australia, what did you do? I said, I went to, I went to talk to the people. The guy said, tell me one of the stories. I said, when I start, we are not going to finish. He said, sir, collect your visa and go. So... When I came outside, I wanted to say thank you to the man. He said, please, can you give me my phone number? Maybe I'll send you something. He said, sir, sir, it's not important. Do you know me anywhere? It's not important. Do you know my mother? It's not important. Have you seen me anywhere? It's not important. That's how God's vision is about to open strange doors. Strange doors. Strange doors. Strange doors for you. Lift your hand and say, Lord, set me at the right time. Now listen to me. So don't be bothered that now you don't have a car. Don't be bothered that you don't have a wife. Don't be bothered. Maybe it is not yet time. But those that the time is also past, I pray for you. <laughs> Let there be a reverser. Say a reverser. Yeah. Somebody shall appoint a time. Yeah. Now remember, God is a God of times and seasons. So every assignment or every event has time. We need to be sensitive to know the timing so that vision will not suffer. As Adams is here, how many times I used to drive with him? We, we just roam around. Adabraka, here. Thank God he's not dead. He's not there. Testimony. There's no place we didn't go. Some people, they see us today, they think it's today that oh, because we went everywhere. We will hear there's something here, we'll go. We'll hear there's something here, we'll go. We'll hear there's something here. May the Lord give you servants like that, people um, who understand what God has called. You didn't raise your hands, eh? 
it's not people when you say this, 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 there are every one of you, may the Lord give you some kind of Joshua that. Well, sometimes we go to a place and say, okay, please, take our car, we'll walk home, just give us the land. We'll just rule me. Finally, finally, at the appointed time. Somebody is here today, you don't have one plot because your first house will be on one acre land, one acre land. At the right time. Let the amen be bigger than what you are saying. Your, your house will be on one acre land. My God. We're just moving. God was watching us. Upon the time. And the level we have hit, we are not coming back. In case some jealous people think that we are coming back, go and catch a new vision. We are in the center of the center of God's vision for our life. May the Lord give all your enemies high blood pressure, hypertension, wicked people who don't know who don't know that people are operating in the assignment. Your witchcraft can't do things. When people are in the, the God, your witchcraft will, will craft you yourself. So tonight we look at five keys that cause vision to be fulfilled. Key number one, faith. Every vision of God look bigger than your size. So you need faith to accomplish it. There is no future for the faithless when it comes to vision. Faith cannot be passed in the fulfillment of vision. The vision of God is always bigger than your current size. So you can't fulfill it without faith. Since the vision is from God, you need his backing. And the only way to provoke God's backing is to believe him. It is faith that commits God to do what he said he would do. Faith is believing that God will do what he said he will do. I just prophesied one acre for somebody's first house who will receive it by faith. Don't look at yourself. Maybe by now, that person, if I tell you to buy uh, 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 one meter, one meter, square meter land you don't have. Don't look at your current situation. If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. No matter how big the vision, you need faith to drive it. Every mountain surrenders to faith. Faith moves mountain. Mark 11, 22 and 23. If the vision is not bigger than your size, it's not from God, please. Every vision from God to you is always bigger than you. So, it will warrant faith. Anything you can just do, you are reading here from God. The man said he saw cattle coming. They gave him 10 acres and he doesn't have money to believe God. Now, what is the testimony? He got it without paying a dime, believing God. Thank God for women of faith. May you have a wife who have faith too. All the men, I'm praying for all the men right now. May the Lord not give you an eyeshadow wife who is only taking pictures and putting on Facebook, but a woman that can say, go, I am with you. I'm going to pray. I will hear from God. A woman that will say, if you heard from God, then let's go all out. What are you using big bottles for? Does it add anything to life? Ten feet tall. It should be fair color. Every vision at the beginning looks impossible. But impossibility surrenders to faith. No matter how impossible the vision looks, if you can believe God, you can get it down. Mark 9, 23. My God. Jesus said, if thou can believe, all things are possible. All things are possible. That project is possible. That vision is possible. That school is possible. That journey is possible. That car is possible. That project is possible. All possibility. And lift your hand and shout, I believe. Listen to me, by the time we hit June this month, my God, many people will be looking for your testimony. By the time the man cut half, many will be hearing your testimony. You need mountain moving faith. I'm saying, if you say that vision is from God and you don't need faith for it, it's not from God, it's your own ambition. 
Anything God tells you looks bigger. But no matter how impossible it looks, there are giants on every man's promised land. Your promised land is God's vision for your life. There are giants. Once God tells you to do something, the devil will rise up. But faith is a giant killer. First Samuel 17, 34 to 37. First Samuel 17, 34 to 37. David got to the battlefield and there, there was the giant of God about to swallow Israel. David said, hey, 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 thy servant kept his father's sheep. There came a lion and a bear and took one of the sheep. I rushed and I took the sheep out of his mouth. And I like what he said. He said, the same God that delivered me from the harm of the lion, from, from the power of the bear, shall deliver this uncircumcised Philistine. No vision will threaten your destiny. No amount of money they mention can threaten you to turn back. And I decree, no matter the bigger, the bigness of the vision, there is a possibility anointing on your life. Somebody shout, it is possible. Why do you need faith? It's a giant killer. Any giant vision staring at you will die on the platform of faith. Vision is not for the faithless. That's why you need to build your faith. Some of you, God is going to put billions in your hands. Build your faith. Build your faith. So when the money comes, you don't marry another wife. Prosperity destroys a fool. Build your faith. So you can carry, a time is going to come, you carry a budget for 1,000 students. Now you sign a check and you will pay. Build your faith. The vision is big. Build your faith. Every vision will be attacked. Because the devil is envious of visionaries. He couldn't, ask, he couldn't achieve his vision of overthrowing God. So he has been a failure from the beginning. So when he sees anybody with God's vision, he attacks him. Every human being is weak. It is faith that covers your weakness. So Romans chapter 4 verse 17 to 21. The Lord said to Abraham, you become a father of many nations. He looked left and right. He said, ah, biologically, this vision is not possible. You look at my body. And then, but the Bible says, Abraham was strong in faith. As it is written, I've made you a father of many nations. Before he, whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. Somebody shout, my vision is possible. Say it with some power. Say it again and again and again and again. You saw yourself studying in a university in America. They bounce you visa seven times. Brother, go again and hold on to the vision. Number eight, the visa shall be granted. Number nine, the visa shall be granted. Number ten, the visa shall be granted. You bought one plot of land. Land gas came. They booted you out. Go for another one. They will come. When they fight and fight it, the Bible said, and Isaac dug a well, and the Philistines struggled. He dug another one, they struggled. He dug another one. By the time he got to the third one, they left him alone. I see demons leaving you alone. If that vision is from God, Abraham was strong. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become a father of many nations? According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Yesterday, one of the young guys AG guys, he sent me and said, Papa, see, 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 the, he sent me pictures of a church. He said, we have also done it in three months. We are uh, seven months. We are left in the windows and the doors and the fittings. I said, brother, what he was trying to tell me is that he is tapping into the Holy Hill testimony. You see, when your vision becomes reality, many people will tap. You will influence many, many people. Tell your brother, don't give up now because many are watching you. Don't give up your vision. Many are going to, many are going to be stirred. Many are going to rise up. Many are going to live if you live. And I prophesy of everybody here. Your vision will not fail. Your vision will not fail. Your vision will not fail. Abraham was strong in faith. And one of the things that a man of faith does, you talk about it every day. 
one day I'll be a best farmer. You talk about it. this school will be one of the best schools in Ghana. Don't look at anybody. Faith talks. Faith talks. Faith talks. I can never be broke. I can never be poor. That's faith talking. Faith talking. Those who doubt, they don't talk. Keep on talking. Joseph said, I'll dream another dream. His father called him and said, small boy, I called him, come here. Are you trying to say me? He said, Daddy, no, you are low. You, mommy. All oh, our brothers, they were bowing down to me. My God, here. And the Bible said they hated him yet the more. Yet, he dreamed another dream. People are jealous at your le this level. But God is about to give you another vision. I say, God is about to give you another vision. Somebody say it will be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. We are not stopping here. Now we are driving very soon. You see where some of us will be going. My God. Don't let them paralyze your faith. I came here as a man of God to stir you up. Young lady. Very soon you will control the whole family. You will feed the whole family. You will feed the whole neighborhood. All your classmates will use you as a point of reference. Those that said you were not good in school. Hey. They will come for you to you for loan. They will come to you for you to pay their school of him. For it is not of him that ran it. Of him that will it, but it is God that showed mercy. It is God that showed mercy. Hold somebody's hand and say, Keep the vision alive. Oh, press this and pray, press and say, Keep the vision alive. There are ladies here right now, you don't have a child. Listen to me, but you have seen in the vision that God gave you a child. No matter what the doctor will say, no matter what the medicine will say, a professor, you know, only have a child, you have children, you have children. Don't throw in the towel. The only thing that can destroy your vision is when you stop fading. When you stop fading. Blessed is she that believe. For there shall be a performance of the things told her by the Lord. Faith. I have some of my co-liberals and sons of the prophets here. Where they are churches, it seems they can never buy a property. Because they are quoting millions all the time. Million is just an arithmetic. My God. <laughs> it's just one of the alphabet in one, two, three. If I be a man of God, before this year runs to an end, many of you, your vision will come to pass again and again and again and again. Give somebody a high five and say the vision will not fail. The vision will not fail. Deuteronomy 2.36 he said, from Aroa to the brink of the river. <laughs> when I caught that sketch, something tossed me on. From Aroa, which is by the brink of the river of Anon, and from the city that is by the river, even on to Gilead, there was no one city too strong. Somebody said, no city too strong. No opposition too strong. No vision too strong. No money too big. There was no one city too strong for us. The Lord delivered them into our hands. I prophesy God will deliver that vision into your hands. You will build that building. You will build that church. You will build that company. You are going to be a multinational personality. You have companies in Ghana, Africa, outside. And I prophesy, I see 27 people here. You are having international bank accounts all around. God will take you from a local personality and shoot you somewhere. Don't care the way they think about you. Don't care the way they look at you. Keep on holding the vision. And with your faith. From Aroa. Very soon many will force their, themselves into your life. The vision will speak. Tell three people the vision will speak. My God. The, the vision will speak. The vision will speak. The vision will speak. Don't give up. Maybe you have failed 20 times. But you know you heard from God. Don't throw in the towel. The vision will speak. The vision will speak. He said, rejoice not over me. Oh my enemy, when I fall. For when I fall, I shall rise. When I fall, a righteous man falls seven times. My God, he shall rise again. Anyone that have thrown his vision into a dustbin, go and collect it back. I say, go and collect it back. For it shall come to pass. 
this is the year the year 2022 when all your visions will jump from the paper and it will become a reality give the lord a shout of praise The other day, my general superintendent, he called me. He said, Kojo, do you know how many people came to me to tell me that you shouldn't start a church? Then he now asked me, say, where are they today? Where are they today? What people say about you doesn't make you. It's what you believe about yourself. Let them say you are poor and tell yourself I'm a millionaire. <laughs> Ooh, I want to see you laughing, laughing right now. Let them say whatever they want to say. Tell yourself, I'm going to make it. I will make it big time. I will get there. No matter the challenge, I'm going to get there. One day I'll stand on top of the mountain and the whole world is going to see you. Give the Lord another shout of praise. Some of you are here, white men will be working for you in your office. You are going to have expatriate. Those that are fighting you will die. But the vision will continue to live. Now let me give you one secret about life. How many of you want to live long? Now, if you want to live long, attach yourself to God's vision. His visions don't die. If you don't have a vision, you can die tomorrow. But if you have something you are living to see, it prolongs your life. That's another key. <laughs> Can you imagine Bishop Erebo 69? He said, he said to the people that if you are, you, are, you are praying for me to die for inheritance, you are going to wait for a long time because this man will still be here after 100 years. My God. So I choose to live. Because the vision lives on. Nobody should sit there and say you are a, a housewife. What wife? Sister, stand up from somewhere. The days when men die and the women are crying because they are not doing anything. Somebody shout, it is over! Number two, to fulfill the vision, be a tireless worker. Be a tireless worker. No vision fulfills itself. If you don't work it out, it may never work. Jesus said, I must work the work of him that sent me. John 9, 4. My father works and I work. John 9, 4. I must work the works of him. If Jesus was working, how dare you? You are waiting for something to happen. Those that wait will waste away. Put your hands to work. All the people are moving. Even when we are driving, we are working. Hey, every two minutes count. Laziness kills vision. Idleness drives vision. Laziness kills vision. Idleness drives vision. Work it out and it will work. Behind everything that is working, there is a human hand. So stretch your hands. Stretch your hands. Redemption is not an exemption from work, but a call to diligence. Diligence brings greatness. Proverbs 22, 29. See as thou a man that is diligent, hard worker in his business, he shall stand before kings. Without work, faith is in vain. Without work, faith is in vain. James 2, 26. As the spirit without the body is dead, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. So don't just only confess. Put your confession to us. Faith must have action. If you confess without working, you will end up frustrated. Proverbs 14, 23. Proverbs 14, 23. Every day, make every day count. Start new things. Look for new opportunities. Even when you are in your room, every day, in all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tend to penury. Proverbs 10 4. He become a poor that dealeth with a slack hands. Proverbs 10 4. Proverbs 10 4. He become a poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent shall be rich. Number three, focus. Focus. Once God shows you what to do, Keep focusing. There are things that people give me. I give to other people because I don't have time to do that. 
my, my, I have business people. If I have opportunity, I'll give them. I'll, I'll, because my, my mind, I'm not able to divide it to, to do two things at the same time. Broken focus is the reason for many broken lives. Broken focus. You are there. Anybody can invite you to any funeral. You don't even know who died. You are going. Once people gather, you are part of the gathering. As soon as God gives you a vision, the devil will try to distract you. But still goes. Matthew 6, 22. If you are, he said that, he said that, the, 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 he said that the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body will be full of light. In other words, if you focus on one thing, success rate is great. Focus. You can't have a shop. Every day you are not in the shop. You are moving somewhere. Last week you went to funeral at Bogosu. The other week you were at Gariba. The other week, Sunday man. What is focus? It is the concentration of attention or energy on something until it is done. The concentration of attention and energy on something without shifting until it is done. Philippians 3.13 He said, this one thing I do. Brethren, I cannot myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. This one thing I do. A man of vision is a man of one thing. It's a man of one purpose. Avoid things that are not part of your core vision. Channel all your energy doing your business and the vision will be fulfilled. You are not a funeral contractor. I told them in Kumasa, Ashanti spent too much on funerals. 40 days. It starts with one week. They will get angry, but I'm one of them, so they can't accuse me. <laughs> at, 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 one week. Then the real funeral. Then 40 days. Then one year. Five years. Ten. Celebrating the dead. I told them recently that when it comes to funeral, I'm an away man. <laughs> there are things when it comes, I change, I change tribe. My God. Funeral in the morning. Eleven, the dead is buried. Funeral is buried. Oh, yeah, make we go now. Clap your hands for ah, wasting time. Some of you have not gone to funeral at Iwerland before. Because I'm saying, go and visit. Very nice, simple, not much money consuming funeral. Now, what will you say? I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I was asking one guy in Kumasi last Saturday, ah, when I saw my people, hey, gloves, come in. I told him, he said, you know, let's continue. <laughs> Number four, persistence. Every vision will be opposed. You must have a never give up spirit. Your vision cannot see daylight without persistence. Persistence is the hallmark of champions. Luke 16, 16. Say from the prophets until now. The law in the prophets until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. Every man presseth into it. Somebody shall press. The word press means something is resisting you. <laughs> if we didn't press, we will not be here. The way people have tormented us, they come to carry the building instruments. When you go now, buy anyone. As for Sophie and this thing, yeah, it's not a problem. Oh, now, they lock the door. I buy a new padlock. Because the people are not serious. They want to transfer their own seriousness to stop her from moving. Today I decree, anything stopping you, witches in your family, whatever corporation people, people who have worked for, they don't want to pay you to slow you down. I break all those iron barriers in the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you speed. Somebody's out here, I receive it. 
Anywhere you need money from and it's not flowing, I decree 24 hours. Let there be a flow. The challenges of life are many. Until you press forward, your vision will remain on paper. Every vision bearer must go through rough roads to achieve the vision. Brace yourself. Toughen up. Stretch your chest. And press to the end. Philippians 3.14 Now when you go, they reject you one. You say, ah, I'm tired. No? No? I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling. Where are my meloniers? Give a shout of praise in this place. Lift, do your hands like this. I press. I press. You have filled that paper 20 times. Write number 21. Write it again and again and again and again. Number five. This is where we are going to close. Seed your vision. Seed your vision. This is a spiritual law many have not been taught. So their vision has no foundation. There's nothing to speak for them when the vision comes under attack. Um, we call it vision seed. That's my life. As soon as I get a vision, the next thing is to source it. Why? The seed protect your vision. Because the seed is a sacrifice. Power is in sacrifice. It protects the vision. Hebrews 11.4 By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift and by it he being dead, yes, speaketh. So what is speaking for Abel? See the seed. Your seed has a voice. It speaks for you in the kingdom of darkness. The devil is a killer of vision. And he kills us in the realms of the spirit. And when that battle begins, it is your seed that will defend you. Some people don't know why, what God told them they couldn't do. It was destroyed in the spirit realm. Many people's visions have remained on paper, but they never saw it. They had the potential. They were educated. They had the connection, and yet they never became. Why? It was cut off in the realms of the spirit. Every vision needs provision. The key to provision is the seed. Let it be your lifestyle to always sow seeds towards the realization of your vision. Why? Every vision requires financial power. The success of every project or assignment in life, be it personal, corporate, requires finance. Where money is absent, success is automatically absent. Vision remains unfulfilled. So now pay attention to this. Ecclesiastes 7 12. For wisdom is a defense, money is a defense. You see, it is there. So, copy when the devil attacks your vision, your seed will defend the vision. That's why I teach people don't just start running around. Somebody proposed to you, seed your vision. Don't just start something and you are just moving like atom. Because you have something who wrote their design for you free. You didn't pay for the design, so you think the fulfillment too is free. Wisdom is a defense. Money is a defense. The excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives you life. So money is a defense. Simply means every vision is open to failure if there is no money to bring it to pass. That's why. You need to see the university ever built by Dr. Ora Robert is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's not the first Christian university, but the first charismatic, modern day, whatever. It is called ORU. He carries seed from Africa, went. They called their board members. As the man of God dropped the seed, white people, their years stood up. The seed was a shaky seed. So they say, What do you want here? And he said, when it is time for us to build our own, I'm tapping into the grace that is here. ORU has remained one university since it was built many years ago. Bishop Wedepo now has three universities. Put your hands together for them. See, the seed is talking. I can't hear you. See, the seed is talking. 
Those of you who are silent, you are afraid of money. Open your mouth and say, the seed is talking. This is the part of the message where you should be excited. Because this is the part where God comes into partnership with you and try to help you. Life is not one-sided. Your seed will generate abundant overflow of money and resources. When I got to know that we are one day going to build a church, 22 of the year Tamils died, I took all the money that we had, it was 100 million, and I showed it. We didn't have plot of land, no plot of land, no cement, no nothing. I was protecting the seed. That's why I could stand and I say, it's a demons. You see, those statements are not vain statements. They are based on seed power. The building shall be built without borrow because I knew what was on the ground. Don't make me a talk. I sold that seed 20, 1200 million was no human's money. That's 10 years ago. I divided the 50 million here. 50 million. You are a pastor. You are watching me. Some of you. Anytime you have a project, the devil tells you. I don't know whether the devil or God. <laughs> Write letters and be begging for money around. That's not how it is. That's a metro, but that's not the kingdom metro. Anytime you catch a vision. A few days ago, a man of God came here. And then he said, Bishop, pray for me. Pray for me. I'm looking for seed to sow. My God. I've never seen anybody request that type of prayer before. He didn't say, I need money. He said, I need a seed. I need a seed. I need a seed. I need a He has a bigger vision, but he needs a seed. Let's look at this biblical example. Number one. God's vision to save the whole world, he started with Jesus as a seed. John 3, 16 and 17. Revelation is important. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He has sown the seed in verse 16. Look at 17. For God sent not his son, one, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, one son, the world might be saved. He sowed Jesus as a seed. He reaped the whole world. Put your hands together for the Lord. <laughs> Number two, Solomon's vision to rule his life very well was seeded with a seed. First Kings chapter 3, verse 4. Solomon went to Gibeon and offered a thousand burnt offerings. The Lord appeared. He said, Solomon, what do you want to say? I want wisdom. He said, no, wisdom alone is not enough. I'm going to give you money. In a, a they start their visions with seed. Some of us, we start with drawings. <laughs> Number three, Hannah's vision to have a child of her own never worked until she seeded the vision. First Samuel 1, 11. First Samuel 1. And she vowed about. Now we are told he's been going to Shiloh. He's been going, going, going. Oh God, I need a child. Oh God, I need a child. Oh God, I need a child. Madam, this is your vision. This is it. Oh Lord of hosts, if you would now indeed look upon the affliction of the handmaid and remember me and not forget the handmaid, but will give the handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall no razor. She see that the vision. Later, he had gave birth to five extra children. Japhthah's vision. Japhthah was recruited as a military general to take Israel out of the torment of enemy nations. And before he went to the battle, which was victory was his vision, he gave God a seed. What was it? Judges 11, 30 to 32. This is a secret I'm sharing with you, so please pay attention. You may not even understand it today. Go and listen and let it be your lifestyle. There is nothing I thought that doesn't work because I know this one. Seed power. Japhthah vowed vow unto the Lord and said, If thou will, without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the lost, and I will offer it up a burnt offering. 
and God gave him the victory. Clap your hands for the Lord. Hey, <laughs> what a secret. The king of Moab. I'm giving you so many examples. So you didn't say when I said you didn't hear it. A vision without a seed is a daydream. Because what will the seed do? It will fight spiritual battles for you. Money is a defense. I quoted a quotation to you now. You can't defend your vision. Sacrifice will defend the vision. When it ever comes under attack. Second Kings chapter 3. Verse 26 to 27. The king of Moab also went to war. What is the vision of every person fighting? To win. That the Bible said the battle became sore. Put it in the amplifier to explain it better. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 sword men to break through the king of Edom, but they could not. Somebody said they could not. Okay, so look at what he did. He the man has tried everything for fulfill that vision. If his soldiers could not, this is where the key. Then the king of Moab took his eldest son, costly sacrifice, who was to reign in his place and offered him publicly as a burnt offering. Who oh, to jump out on the city wall, horrifying everyone. And there, there was a great wrath against Israel. My God. Israel's allies, Judah and Edom, withdrew from the king of Jehoram and returned back to their old land. The man who won the battle. Put your hands together for the Lord. <laughs> Ask your friend, do you have a vision? See the vision. When we wanted to buy a church land and we saw that the money was not enough, the seed we sow was $3,000. That brought an angel to my room. And the angel said, from today, this is the receipt of the money you have sold. The church entered into a new level of overflow. We didn't stop there. When the people negotiated with us to pay, to beg, I am ashamed. I don't know how to beg. Say, to beg, I'm ashamed. Yes. Say it. It's in the Bible. Say, to beg, I am ashamed. Carried that Toyota Land Cruiser, we saw it. The heavens opened. Before the people could say, Bring your money, we have already finished paying. There is no time in my life that my seed did not go with my vision. Because I realized in Luke 7, nothing I trust God like sacrificial seed. Luke 7. If you really mean what you want, don't just go. One of the factors to fulfill. Now here Jesus was going through a town. Let me paraphrase it for you. And a man came. Jesus! Jesus! Help me! Help me! My son is sick. Help me! He didn't mind him because he, had, he was moving on schedule. Luke 7. When they go to verse 5, the people changed what they were saying. They said Jesus, this man who is calling you deserves attention. Because he has built a synagogue for our nation. Look at the next verse. Immediately. Then Jesus went with them. Somebody that said he didn't mind them. Attention. So your seed draws attention to your vision. Your seed draws heaven's attention to your vision. Until you seed your vision, you are not serious about it. Until you see the vision, you are not serious about it. So I give you these five keys. Number one, faith. Number two, work tirelessly towards the vision. Number three, stay focused. Number four, be persistent. Number five, seed your vision. Lift your hands to the Lord. This is a conference type of, so that's why I'm not doing giddy giddy too much. I want you to pray about that vision that God has given you. We have 10 minutes more to go. So, 
This is the day number four of the conference. Anybody that is serious about it, whatever vision that God has given him, you are going to pick this one of this envelope, vision seed. How many some serious people are here? Oh, everybody's hand is up. Okay. You come for this one. Lift your hands. The ushers are going to give you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You know the way I do my things. So. Lift your hands. How many of you have some vision this year? Who need vision? Not just whoa, whoa, you are dead. Every living human being. Who have a, better lift your hands. It's not because of this envelope that all of a sudden no, no more vision. <laughs> all of a sudden they, they see that cut your vision off. So all the testimonies I'm hearing, you didn't hear. Lift it up. So helping Anama will go home and say, This year, what, what is my vision? It's not something I want you to do now. We are not playing. Peter, Apostle Peter is there. He will say, Lord, I need a plot. Peter, I hope you heard my testimony. 100 million, 2012. My God. One of the pastors, he called me. He's a bishop. He called me from his office. Ah, called Bempa and asked him, why this big money? I told the girl, tell him that when it's time for, for me to build a church, I don't want to struggle the way others have struggled. Did it happen or not? Is it still happening? This one is not in Harvard books, though. See the vision. It's not in Legon books. Is in the book of books. Kuka can so and say, my, my house, my three-bedroom or four-bedroom house that I'm going to build. Yes. My God. Let me see your envelope. Please, you are not under pressure. If you like, don't bring it back. Media, I can tell you that. I know God too much. Of. Me, I will never stand on this altar to lie. For what? Never. It's a secret and revelation God has shown us. We need to show people. Thank you, Bishop. See, Pastor man, I told him, man, nobody can move the church from the city that they should go to the village. So they saw it and they said, two million dollars. It's a young church. Yo. I said, don't worry. There's a land somewhere. He brought his first fruit three weeks ago. A land that belongs to a company. Millions they give it to him. When he check, it is five minutes from his church. You see, you don't know where the things are. God knows. Some of you are an elephant, but your seed is like the shit of a cat. When it comes to seed, it's like the, the shit of a cat. You are playing with your life. The bigger the vision, the bigger your seed. Right. Now I want you to stand up. Some of you, your vision is marriage. Oh. Certain things are blocking the road. You say, Lord, this year, I will marry. And what did I say, Alex? Money is a defense. It means a fight. A fight. You, if you fight, they will arrest you, but your money can fight. There are some witches that must go to the grave so you can be free this year. If you kill them, Ghana government will arrest you. The seed will do the job. Money is a defense. Everybody stand up. I want you to pray for the next three minutes with this thing in your hands. My father! Pray any kind of prayer you want to pray. This year you will fulfill vision. Pray about the vision. You need an international scholarship is a vision. Pray! And let the Lord tell you what to sow. Tomorrow, Sunday, anytime you are ready. My God. This wedding must come on as I sow. Kadaboro Sata. Brada de 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 kataya. Lord, leboro katarakata. Empower my faith. Help me to stay focused. 
Make me persistent. Now my seed defend my vision. Somebody pray. Eraba sotere kete, bare de rebo sete kete, badi maloko roka tara gadi alus. Ebara na na baza gara gadi ya, edra gadi ya gara gadi ga, edra gaga gaga ga, araba ni moro bara gada 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 ya. Pray over the vision. This year, every vision that God has given you, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass, except you have no vision. Somebody pray. Open my eye Empower my faith This vision must work I prophesy That vision will come to pass The devil will not stop you Your faith is empowered You are receiving focus Whatever you do May the Lord show you the location Somebody pray Pray some more Pray some more Pray some more The vision to expand your business The vision to build a church My God my God, you are a little bit of a rat, ta 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 Ah, the vision to become minister for so so and so. Many people want to kill him. It's honorable. Honorable, you need to follow me to Benino. Most politicians, they don't go themselves. They have people who consult for them. <laughs> In case you don't know. I've met a few of them. They travel to nations. They buy them tickets to go and consult on their behalf. I know. That's why I was saying, you sit down in the church and say, oh, whatever. Um, I'm, going to, I'm only going to pray. Money is a defense. Something must defend your vision. But I prophesy over your life. Whatever give you vision my God has given you, anyone that struggle on that vision will die for the vision to come to pass. Now lift your hands. May the Lord empower your faith to carry the vision. May the Lord give you stamina, the spirit of persistence. May the Lord cause you to stay focused. And may the Lord give you energy. Nobody celebrates a failure. Now listen to me. The reason why I'm very serious is that no one celebrates failure. People only celebrate success. Therefore, I decree the year 2022 it will be a year of fulfillment of visions in your life. Every thought it shall be accomplished. Everything on, you put on paper it shall be accomplished. You finish building that office apartment. That A, B, and B. What do they call it? B and B. Bread and breakfast that you are better. You are accomplishing. That school you want to start. It will jump from kindergarten to JSS to, to whatever to university. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That vision to build a church. It shall come to pass. May your seed defend your vision. My God. Lift your hands in thanksgiving. Now this is what I'm going to tell you. Psst. Go home and pray. Ask the Lord, what do I show for this vision? I've given you for all the visions of this year for the church. I've already shown $30,000. We are not playing on. <laughs> we are not playing on. Some of you, if you get that money, you just use it to go and do something. I, I saw it. I said, it's even more than that, but I'm just giving you a Man of God, don't just start the year with prayer. So. Money is a defense. The devil that will kill me is not yet born. And generally, I'm not going to that. Listen to me. Any vision you have, some of you this year, you must travel. Oh, ah, ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> now, laugh, laugh at the devil. <laughs> that one there. Yeah, this year, yeah, my friend. Where are all my daughters looking for international scholarship? Whether they are bombing Ukraine or not, you shall go and continue your studies and, and get a full scholarship. 
You heard the testimony. The woman tested me. He said, I couldn't come for the camp meeting, but I heard you pray for my daughter. Man of God, it is one of our pastor's wife. I've never seen the woman before. As I stand on this altar with my Bible in my hands, this year 2022, every plan that God has for you, it shall come to pass in broad daylight. They will talk. They will know eh, every Tobiah and Sambalat who will say this vision will not see the dream of the day. They will be there to celebrate the opening of that project. Give the Lord a shout of praise in this place. Don't go and put one city inside. Be serious. If you are serious about that vision, sit down. Sit down. Think. Lord, how much do I sow for this vision? A man of God called Jerry Savel went for a meeting and then he took a thousand dollars each and so for ten areas of his ministry. Aviation, personal house. He sold eleven thousand. Thousand for aviation. Thousand for TV. Thousand. He had different, 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 different. <laughs> he said in three months, my God. The heavy spoke. And none of those areas of ministry have ever entered into deficit. Don't joke with this one. Sign your signature on it so that when it falls down, you will see that it's not somebody else's envelope. The bigger the vision, the bigger you'll see. Let all the early ones stop shitting like a cat. The shit of an elephant must look elephantiasis. Look serious and be serious. Thank you, Lord. Take your offering for tonight. Tomorrow night, hands will be laid on people's visions. Please, listen to this instruction. Tomorrow when you are coming, I want you to write the three most important visions for this year for your life. Three most important don't put it on paper, I will throw it away. If you, if you go and cut some paper like this. When you come, I will bend down, I will take it and throw it away. Write it and put it in an envelope. And prophesy on it. Give timeline. Father, my marriage, October. This building, June. International traveling, April. Be a man of faith. If you bring any longo longo paper here, I won't let it reach God. I will deal with it myself. <laughs> and at the beginning of seven, we will lay it at the altar. I declare tomorrow as vision night. Say vision night. Vision night. Now carry my oil in. Now listen, and I'm betting you. Hey, this year, those who don't know you will know you. Lift your offering, Father. In the name of Jesus. Multiply visions. If you don't have the podcast, let them connect you. Let them connect you to the podcast. You know, we've been very consistent with our time. We close at 8.30. What I'm doing is just commentary. So your see. That envelope. Oh, I'm going to start three companies. So an amount for each. I go. Heaven will speak. Some of your marriages are delaying. Hey, see that. And the seed shall be prosperous. This is a year of fishing fulfillment. How many are joining those driving their first car this year? Oh wow, I like that. I like that. Wave, wave, wave it like a khaki. Wave your hands like a khaki. Very soon that khaki is going to drop in your palm this particular year. How many to their own house? Own house. Own house. Some will have another house in addition to the one they have already. Those about to travel first time internationally, do your hands like that. That's your passport. Pack it in the name of Jesus. 
that vision is going to come to pass those that, those that are going to marry this year do your hands like this my god it's, oh my god look at it it shall come to pass in the name of jesus father thank you bless you for this offerings in jesus name we pray amen <laughs> You want to give your tithe, run to the altar, run to the altar, run to the altar. I, I encourage every pastor here. Your church building will be dedicated very, very soon. I want you to go and listen to the message. My podcast guys are outside. Let them connect you. Listen over and over and over and over. Over and over and over. Every barrier ahead of you. Tomorrow night, I'm going to pray for those who believe that certain things are delaying their vision. Tomorrow night, we'll pray for three groups of people. So tomorrow night, we are going to do a little bit of menstruation. So please, invite all your friends. Tell every holy hell those who have not been coming, that they should be here tomorrow night. Remember, his vision are three most important vision. In a very nice simple, it's like you are writing a letter to your lover. Some of you, you need to type it going to be very powerful now with all eyes closed i want to call some people whose visions vision to serve god is going to start tonight you are here you are not born again you want to say pastor i want to give my life to jesus i i i my my my, my along the line my vision to go to heaven also drop in the middle of the road i want to pick it up first time i'm going to give your heart to the lord or you used to go to church and you backslided wherever you are please lift your hands i want to pray for you Vision from God begins with being born again. Lift your hands very high. Jesus, give me a new vision. Some of you used to go to church, something happened, you stop. Hey, reconnect, 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 reconnect. reconnect. If you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus for God, Jesus to give you a new vision, run to the altar. You used to go to church, you were disconnected. You want to say, Pastor, I want to renew my commitment. I want to renew my commitment. God bless you. Son, lift your hands. Open your mouth and say, Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. Please have mercy. Forgive me all my sins. Lord, write my name in the book of life. I believe you died for me. And I declare Jesus is Lord. I'm born again tonight. I will save you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Clap your hands for him. Follow him. Some of the pastors and leaders, you are not aware that we have been praying some midnight prayers. You can join us tonight at 10 30 at the terrace. Stand on your feet, shake your friend and laugh and say, Congratulations. The vision has come to pass. Shake, shake another person and say, Congratulations. The vision has come to pass. Share, share the grace with laughter. With laughter. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Keep on congratulating people who, whose houses have been dedicated.